reaction type is acid and base. So in all the acid-base reactions, you're going to have a hydrogen and H plus move from one thing to the other. So uh, what you're going to what you're going to have to do to look for acid-base to know that you have an acid-base, you'll often have something that starts with an H. And I am limiting the definition of acids and bases by doing this, by the way. It's just a way to find acid-base reactions very quickly. So you're going to look for something that starts with an H. That's an indicator it's an acid. Hopefully, well, actually, you do know. You do know your strong acids. You know there's eight of them. So we have um, hydrochloric, and then we have perchloric, and we have chloric. We have hydrobromic, hydriodic. I'm just going down the halides and something over. Um, periodic, and then we have nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So I think I got them all. I think that was eight. Um, even though I was using my fingers, I wasn't really counting. Okay, so you need to know your strong acids, um, so you can write this, and you need to be able to identify the bases. So they're usually containing hydroxide, amide, oxide, or they are the conjugates of an acid. We know acetic acid is a weak acid, its conjugate is acetate, so sodium acetate, that's a weak acid. We know um, hydrosulfuric acid, H2S, that is an acid, so we know that if we see the conjugate of that, if we see something with just sulfide, that that is a conjugate base. So, um, to predict these, Got to know these things. Um, one big thing is you'll always, we're looking for net ionic equations, which means you have to show the ions that are present. So if it's a strong acid, remember to separate the H from the acid. If it's a weak acid, keep it all together. Because weak acids exist mostly, mostly whole. So acetic acid or let's do hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid would be written like that because that's how it exists. Hydrochloric acid would be written like this because it exists in water mostly like that. Let's try some. It's all about practice and knowing your polyatomic ions and acids. So solid calcium carbonate, I know that is CaCO3, I write it all together because it's a solid, is added to a solution. Solution tells me it's aqueous, it's all dissolved, of ethanoic acid, acetic acid. I know that's a weak acid, so I'm going to write it all together. CH3, COOH. This is the acidic H, it's the, the H plus that's going to come off. So I know in my reaction, I'm going to take that H plus. I can cut this calcium carbonate in half, and that carbonate can take on the H plus. So it'll actually take on two H pluses to make H2CO3, that's carbonic acid. And that leaves the calcium to go with the acetate. So we can say calcium is a 2 plus. Acetate is the CH3COO. Um, I'm going to have two of those. Like that. And then the next thing you want to do, um, we should balance. And actually, I should write that separately because it's going to be aqueous. So let's go ahead and say I'm going to need two of these to give up those two H pluses. So. Um, one thing that carbonic acid does, this is just something we're going to learn, carbonic acid turns into carbon dioxide in water. So we're going to want to see, as soon as you see carbon or carbonic acid, know that you can write water plus carbon dioxide, because that's what happens, it decomposes. Okay, so we've got water, carbon dioxide, and then this calcium is going to be floating around aqueous, and this acetate is floating around aqueous as well. So two acetates, CH. COO, one minus. Okay, so the entire reaction is going to be solid calcium carbonate plus two acetic acid to make water, carbon dioxide, cal uh, one calcium ion, and two acetates. Then next, we have concentrated hydrochloric acid. It's hydrochloric acid, it exists as H plus and CO minus. They're separate because it's a strong acid, it dissociates. Um, it's added to a solution, that means it's aqueous, of sodium sulfide. So I'm going to put in any plus and sulfide is an S2 minus charge. Okay, and there'd be two sodiums, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say I know alkalis pretty much don't do anything. If I had an alkali metal, it's highly reactive. So I know an alkali metal is probably going to react and become oxidized. But when I have these alkali ions, they're soluble, mm, they're not going to be reduced. It's not going to do anything, it's going to be a spectator. And actually, chloride is often a spectator, too. So let's go ahead and do this reaction, but I have a good idea that I'm going to cross those out. Okay, so the H plus goes with the sulfide ion. I'll need two hydrogens for the one 
sulfide. It's a weak acid, so I'll put it all together. And that's actually the driving force of the reaction is that this, that these guys come together, they don't dissociate. And then this would make sodium chloride, which is aqueous. So I know I'm not gonna write them on both sides. If I did, I would have chloride ion, sodium ion, and I'd cross out my spectators. So the final balanced equation is two hydrogen ions plus one sulfide ion makes hydrosulfuric acid. Then next, I have hydrogen iodide gas. So that's HI. And right away you might look at that and say, oh, it's a strong acid, I know HI is a strong acid. It is, so if it's in water, I'd have H plus and I minus. However, here it's a gas, so it's gonna be HI. It's together. HI gas, hydrogen iodide gas, is bubbled into a solution. It's a solution. So lithium, ooh, lithium. It's aqueous, it's a solution, so it's aqueous. I write it as ions. I have a good idea that this lithium is gonna do nothing. It's probably a spectator ion, because it's an, al an alkali. So there's two lithiums for every one carbonate ion because it's lithium carbonate, and carbonate is CO3 with a two minus. Okay, so this acid is probably giving up the H to this carbonate. That's probably what's gonna happen. Because as soon as this dissolves in water, this, hydrogen, this um, um, hydroiodic acid is a strong acid, it dissociates. That leaves a free H plus ion floating around to meet up with the carbonate, H2CO3, leaving behind iodide, and the lithiums would still be floating around. So lithium, you didn't do anything, spectator ion. Okay, and as soon as I see carbonic acid, I know that it's actually gonna decompose and become carbon dioxide and water. So instead of H2CO3, I write H2O plus CO2. All right, and just to make sure this guy is balanced, I had H2CO3, so I had two hydrogens, so I needed two HIs. And that means I'm gonna have two iodides. All right, that looks good. Then the next one, I have 0.1 molar nitrous. Nitrous comes from nitrite, so it's ike with us. So that means it is HNO2, nitrous acid solution. It's aqueous, but it's a weak acid, so I write it together. It's added to the same volume of the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. So sodium hydroxide, it's a strong base, it's dissociated, so I have sodium ion and the hydroxide. Right away, I have a strong feeling that I won't do anything with this alkali metal ion. So this H plus and the acid will go to the hydroxide because it's making a very stable compound. It's actually, it's gonna be exothermic as the H plus meets the OH minus to make water. And you're leaving nitrite behind. Oops, not Nitrite ion is left behind, and you're also leaving sodium ion floating around. So I'm gonna cross out that spectator. So nitrous acid plus hydroxide makes water and nitrite, and it's balanced, right? Yep, two H's and O and O2. All right, let's try a couple more. Oh, and as far as volumes, we had 0.1 molar nitrous acid, same volume of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, that means you have equal amounts of moles. And in my balance equation, I have equal amounts of moles. That starts to matter when you have diprotic acids, trying to figure out if you take off both H's or just one. So let's see, I've got 0 0.02 molar hydrochloric acid, so I know that's H plus with a Cl minus. It's a strong acid, so I write it dissociated. It's a good chance the chloride will do nothing. It's mixed with an equal volume of 0.01 molar calcium hydroxide. So plus Ca2 plus plus hydroxide. Okay, and then I can see it's, I'm gonna have twice as many moles of hydrochloric acid as I do of the calcium hydroxide. And that's good because, um, well, actually, it's going to, it's gonna make two chlorides. So we'll have two of these chlorides and two of these H's. Um, but I'm gonna put some H plus left over. But we're just gonna write the balanced equation. So here we go. I'm gonna put the H plus with the hydroxide. So I'm gonna make H2O. And then the calcium, whoops here. I have two hydroxides on my calcium. The calcium would go with the chloride and we'll have to figure out if that's soluble or not. If it's insoluble, I'm gonna write it as a solid product. If it's not soluble, if it's um, soluble, then I know these guys are being spectator ions. So I go ahead and say, 
chlorite is a halide. I know that halides hide, um, which makes them small. So silver, mercury, and lead too. Okay, so this was my way of remembering that halides are insoluble. They're usually soluble, but they are insoluble with silver, mercury, or lead 2 plus. And here I've got my halide not with silver, mercury, or lead 2 plus. So that means this thing is soluble. This is how I remember my solids, which means those spectators do nothing. So I've got two H's and two OH's making two waters. We'll just leave it as H plus, whoops, H plus and OH minus making one water. Okay, that's it. Wow, that was a lot of work for not much. Okay, balance equation, done. Then I have solid zinc carbonate. So zinc, I know forms a two plus, we memorized that one. Carbonate is a two minus, CO3, so those charges are balanced. And it's added to one molar sulfuric acid. So I'm adding it to um, H2SO4. It's a strong acid. So I'm going to go ahead and go H plus plus HSO4 minus. You take off both H's, that's not bad. It's OK. It's a pretty strong, um, strong acid as HSO4, but it's not a strong acid. It's, it's really, really close to dissociating 100%, but it's not there. OK. So. In water, it'll dis dissociate partway, but it's also it's attracted to this carbonate, so I'm going to make it dissociate a little bit more, actually. Okay, so the zinc is going to end up being attracted to the sulfate. Um, so we'll have zinc and sulfate. If this is a solid, I'll leave it. If it is aqueous, I'll know I have spectator ions for the sulfate, and I can cross that out. And actually, this is going to give me a couple of different ways. I'm going to take off both H's to make this cleaner. There's there's a few ways you can do this. And when kids ask, like, oh, but what it really happens, it's kind of a mix and it kind of depends on your conditions. So you might get both of these. Sometimes I've mixed solutions and I expect one reaction to happen and I'll see a couple things happen. I'm going to take off both H's, which is also okay to do. And I'm taking them off just so if this is aqueous, I'll have a spectator I can cross out. Okay, so the H plus goes with the carbonate. And I know if I have two H's in carbonate, I have carbonic acid. Carbonic acid turns into water, so that makes that H2CO3. That immediately decomposes. It makes water and carbon dioxide. That's popular. It shows up a lot. And then I say about sulfate. How do I know if it's soluble or not? Sulfate is generally soluble, but it's insoluble if it's with, um, we say sulfate is so fat from watching CBS and PBS. Um, so that was calcium, barium, strontium, lead 2 plus, strontium again, discuss. Okay, um, well this isn't any of those, so this is going to be aqueous. Um, that means the sulfate is a spectator ion because it's aqueous here, it's aqueous here. And that means zinc went from being in a solid, so I needed it on this side, to being a zinc 2 plus ion. And that's that. Um, it's really good, like I know I went fast. So you can actually try these again um, by going back and hitting pause. It's all about practice. The more you see them, the more you get them.